Hello, I am Jeff King with Professional Services um, in Esri. I work in the St. Louis office, um, and I'm here to talk a little bit about Python package management. Um, I'm sure that you guys have heard of different package managers in Python, namely PIP and Conda. Um, so this presentation just kind of aims to look at the differences between the two, um, how they compare, how you decide to choose either or, um, how that impacts you in Esri space, um, and then also going through a little bit of use cases and workflows of using both of those, both PIP and Conda. So, he, the agenda is what I just talked about. Um, what is PIP? What is Conda? Creating environments, managing environments, a little bit of um, overview on PIP versus Conda, figuring out which one should you choose, and like I said, what does that mean for Python environments and Esri products? So first of all, what is PIP exactly? So PIP is the Python Packaging Authority's recommended tool for installing packages from the Python Package Index, PyPy. Um, so, you know, it's sanctioned and, and supported by them directly. Um, it's recommended by them. And traditionally, it's the package manager that has been most heavily used. Um, and it's the oldest one in Python as well. Uh, it installs Python software as wheels or source. Um, <clears throat> traditionally, it only allowed you to install as source, but they um, added in the ability to install Python um, packages as wheels, which are more compiled um, packages. So another thing to keep in mind with PIP is that you cannot directly create isolated environments with PIP. Just using PIP directly, it only allows you to install packages. You can install extra additional command line um, tools such as virtual ENV, VNV, virtual ENV wrapper to help you create isolated environments, but PIP alone cannot do that. So what is Conda exactly? By comparison, Conda is a cross-platform package and environment manager. So it allows you to install packages in the same way that PIP would allow you to, but it only works in its own isolated space. So with Conda, you can only create isolated environments and you can only install packages um, into those isolated environments. Uh, Compared to PIP, it installs and manages Conda packages as binaries from the Anaconda repository. So what this means is you're not getting the source. You can't look at the source directly. It's going to come prepackaged and compiled. But what that means is the packages are not limited to Python. This means that packages can be built in C, C++, Java, any other languages um, that you need to get your packages from. So that opens up a lot of options in Conda that PIP does not have. Um, another, thing to, another thing to keep in mind is that Conda is a lot newer. It wasn't there traditionally um, when PIP was there. Conda was kind of created uh, in response to some limitations that PIP had. Um, and it kind of bore this, this isolated environment package manager that Conda is uh, because PIP had to rely on multiple different tools to do similar things. So in, or, in, in order to create environments with PIP, um, I'm going to show a couple different options. The first option, which is the one that I'll use mainly throughout this presentation is virtual ENV. So virtual ENV is not there by default with PIP. Um, it is a PIP package that you will have to install and use. Um, and what it allows you to do at that point is it, it allows you to create isolated environments, activate them, deactivate them, just like you're seeing here. Um, so you see here, I can pip install virtual ENV. I can create a environment with this line right here, creating a test ENV. Whenever it creates it, it creates a directory with an activate script that I can go and activate that environment, and then I can deactivate it. Um, so this allows me to create uh, isolated environments and um, create directories for those environments and install Python uh, uh, packages directly into those environments. VNV, 
um, is another option that you have with pip, but it's for Python 3.4 plus. Virtual env um, is supported in Python 2 or 3, um, and it has a lot more functionality than vnv. vnv is a little bit newer. Um, it was created for newer versions of Python, but it's not quite in parity with virtual env yet. So people typically still use virtual env, which is why I'm going to be focusing on that um, throughout the rest of this presentation. Uh, by comparison, creating environments with Conda, you can see here, it's pretty easy. I can just say Conda create, give it a name. And with Conda, I can very easily declare packages that I want to be installed directly into that environment right when I create it as well. For example, if I wanted to install pandas as soon as I created my environment, um, I could say pandas on the command line right there. And with Conda, a cool thing you can do is you can specify what Python version you want. Um, you can also do that with pip um, by pointing to different Python environments directly, different, pointing to different Python exes. But with Conda, it's a little bit easier. All you need to say is, give me this version, 3.6, 3.4, whichever one you prefer, um, and it'll download that isolated environment with that package, or I mean with that Python uh, version. So you see, whenever I want to install it, it gives me a list of packages that'll be installed along with pandas that are just that are dependencies. Um, so you can, you know, check that, make sure that those are packages that you want installed. You can look at the versions, proceed or not proceed. So it's a little bit more friendly, a little bit more um, um, UI heavy than than pip is. With Conda, whenever you create an environment, you can easily list out and see your environments. So you see if I call conda env list, I can see the conda test environment that I created just before. You can also see the ArcGIS Pro environment that is enabled by default here. Um, and it allows you to look at all these and activate whichever environment you want. Um, if you're using command prompt uh, and you activate a conda environment, it will uh, prepend this these parentheses with the name of the environment before your command line. Um, and so that's really useful in just keeping track of which environment you're working in. And whenever you deactivate it, it goes away. So in terms of managing environments, <clears throat> I have a little video here um, to show installing and updating packages with pip. So I'll go ahead and start this. Um, what I'm gonna do in each of these is install pandas. So I'm going to pip install pandas into this one to show you what that looks like. So all I need to say is pip install pandas and I can specify a version. So if I wanted version 0.22.0, all I need to say is this command that I just put up there. You can see it's um, installing everything it needs. It's looking for dependencies. It looks like it already has these requirements satisfied for NumPy um, and six. So now it's going to successfully install that. And you see that now after I pip list, it's gonna show that exact pandas version that I just downloaded. So you'll see 0 0.22.0 there. If I say pip install upgrade pandas, that's going to automatically update, upgrade it to the most recent version of that package on um, straight from the PyPy repository. So now it's looking, it's going and grabbing the latest version and it's going to remove the old version of pandas and just reinstall the newest version. So you see it's attempting an uninstall, it's successfully uninstalled, um, and now it's going to try and install the new version. So this is just showing how easy it is to, you know, grab packages, upgrade them, maintain them as you need to um, with pip. So there you see it upgraded to 0.24.2. In pip, you can also export environments um, to a text file. And what this text file does is it just cre cre it contains some metadata about the environment. It really just contains a list of the packages that you have installed there. So if I say pip freeze requirements txt, it's going to create this txt file that contains a list of all the packages, all of the versions of the packages, and you can recall it later on by just saying pip install and giving it a dash r command um, and passing that that text file path in there. So it's a really good way to you know export environments, um, pass it along to um, um, to peers or coworkers. 
um, and, and make sure you remember that same environment later on. Uh, if you want even more environment management to get even fancier and more similar to Conda, you can say pip install virtual env wrapper. Um, if I'm on Windows, I would have to say, I would have to grab the virtual env wrapper win um, package. But if I'm on Linux, I could use virtual env wrapper. And what this does is it just gives you a little bit more functionality in terms of creating environments, removing environments, listing environments. It gives you some more Conda-esque functionality. So you see that with virtual env, I can um, work on as a new command that allows you to list out all of your environments. Work on would let you switch your environment. And you can see that just like Conda, it prepends this um, environment name before it so you can keep track of which one you're working in. So it just gives you a little bit um, nicer functionality um, of keeping track of that stuff. So now I'm gonna go into showing how managing environments with Conda works. Um, it's going to look very similar to the other video I had with um, Pip. So I'm going to activate that environment, um, test environment that I created, and then I'm going to install Pandas in the exact same way. And I'm going to install a specific version of Pandas here. Um, You'll note that I'm installing a much newer version of Pandas because the Conda repository um, has a newer version of Pandas available than the pip uh, PyPy repository. So I'll install Pandas 0.25.3. Um, it looks like I already had a previous version of Pandas installed, so it looks like it's downgrading it from 1.0.1. .1. I downloaded it and installed it, and there you see Pandas version 0.25.3 after I list it out. And if I want to update it, it's as simple as just saying conda update pandas. So you see there, it's going to tell me what is going to be upgraded to which version. Um, so I can choose to proceed or not proceed. And there we go. So if I say conda list, you can see the new version of pandas there in that list. You see 1.0.1. .1. So it looks like it's a very similar process. Um, and it really is, but Conda just handles um, a little bit of it in a nicer way. With Conda, a really cool thing you can do is you can keep track of your revisions um, or save states, if you will, of your environments. Um, so as you upgrade and install and remove packages from your environments, it's going to save revision states. Um, so if I say Conda list revisions, you can see there at revision three, I removed pandas, and revision four, I added pandas. Um, so if you, if I wanted to go back to the um, state where I removed pandas, I can just say conda install revision three. Um, it'll tell me what packages will be removed in the exact same way that it looks if I were to remove that package directly, and then I can choose to proceed. Conda also gives you really nice functionality for cloning environments. If I want to create a new environment that's an exact clone of an existing one, I can easily use the clone um, command line argument. Um, and Conda also can export environments to a YML file, much like pip can export to a TXT file. And Conda can also completely delete environments very easily by just saying Conda env remove. So in summary, what is exactly different between pip and conda? So I have a little table here. I won't go too crazy in depth into this, but I'll just touch on a few major um, uh, things here. So conda, um, an important thing to keep in mind is that the package sources, there are only about 1500 packages in the anaconda repo and cloud with pip PyPy has over 150,000 packages available because it's been so traditionally used and it's um, the most popular Python package manager. Um, so it obviously has a lot more options. But with that in mind, Conda and PIP can both be used at the same time. So if you're using Conda, you're not just limited to those 1,500 packages. If you're using Conda, you can still PIP install into your Conda environments and get all of those PIP packages that you um, uh could get while you're using pip alone. So you don't really lose out on anything if you're using conda. Um, and like I said, conda by default creates isolated environments and pip really does not. It doesn't support that unless you're using virtual env um, or vnv.
So I'll move on from here. So which one should you choose? So simply, if you want to install Python packages into an isolated environment, it's really personal preference. You can use either. PIP has virtual ENV. Um, Conda has isolated environments by default. So if you really are just looking to do that, it's really personal preference. And, and it might depend on you know, your peers, your coworkers, um, what project you tend to be on. So if your project uh, already has people working in the PIP space, I would recommend just going with that so you don't, um, so you don't disrupt that flow. Um, if you're starting from scratch, it's really just up to you. If you want to modify a system Python installation, um, PIP is a little bit easier because system Python installations are not inherently isolated. Um, and Conda really, the only purpose of it is to create new and manage existing isolated environments and the system Python installation that you might have installed is not isolated. So to do that, to modify that, you would have to use PIP. If you want a Python package that relies on external dependencies like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, anything that was built um, outside of Python, uh, you're going to have to use Conda. Those will only be available from the Conda repository. Those won't, will not be, be available um, straight from PyPy. So what does this mean for Python environments in Esri products? So there's a few different products that use Python. Um, there's ArcMap, ArcGIS Pro, and ArcGIS Server. So I have a little table here to detail the differences between them. The bottom line really is that ArcMap uses PIP and Python 2.7, whereas ArcGIS Pro use Py uses Python version 3.6 and Conda. Um, there are a few other small differences between the two, but what it really comes down to is that when you're publishing GP tools um, from ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro, Depending on where you publish it from, if you publish it from ArcMap and you're using Python version 2.7 and pip, it's going to be published to server using Python 2.7 and pip. If you publish it from Pro using Python version 3.6 and Conda, it's going to publish to server where it exists on server using Python version 3.6 and Conda. So the bottom line really is that it, it kind of depends on where you publish your geoprocessing tool from. Um, if you're using ArcMap, it's 2.7 pip. If you're using Pro, it's 3.6 in Conda. So that's really all I've got. Um, here's some of the resources I used um, while making this presentation. Uh, a lot of it is documentation straight from Anaconda and Python, uh, PyPy documentation. Um, if you want to reach out to me directly, you can email me at jking at esri.com. Um, Scott Bentley was also um, helpful in creating this presentation. So if you want to reach out to him, you can. Um, and there are no questions because this is a virtual presentation. But thank you for listening um, and have a good one.